Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel. Thank you very much for finding me. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. I post every week and I grow cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia without any greenhouses or grow lights or humidifiers, etc. They're either indoors or outdoors or they're not at all. So if that is of any interest, do hit subscribe and follow my continuing and very amateurish adventures. And this week, plant lovers, as you can see, what has burst into bloom for me but Nellie Isla. And it's my own handwritten tag, which will mean nothing but anyway. It is, the name is a bit tricky, so it's either a Burrigiara or it is also known now as an Oncidopsis. So it really depends, I guess, which journal you are reading from, but the name mm, is a little in flux, let's just say. But I happen to like Burrigiara because the man that crossed many different species, which we'll get to, in 1927 was a chap called Albert Burridge, hence the name Burrigiara. And I think if we revert to Oncidopsis, Albert will be forgotten forever. And I don't know, that just seems rather sad. But that brings me to the point that this is a mega mix between four, <laughs> I just held up 10 and then five. It is four different species of orchids and they are Oncidium, Cochlioda, Miltonia, and Odontoglossum, four. So that is quite a mega mix of parentage. And I think it's true to say that Nellie Isla, bless her heart, has a little bit of bad press in terms of how to grow her. So, I had success when I first bought this and it bloomed for me and then it didn't bloom for two years. Well, it missed a year, so it bloomed, then didn't bloom for a year and now it has. And I changed its growing conditions slightly. I thought, hmm, maybe it's time to update you on what I did to ensure Nelly bloomed for me again. Okie dokie, so let's talk basic care. Now, it's a mega mix of four types of orchids and Odontoglossum and Miltonia are quite different in terms of their care. So figuring out what works for you, I think can be a little tricky with Nelly. Hence, I think perhaps some people don't have immediate success because it's not an Oncidium and it's not a Miltonia and it's certainly not an Odontoglossum. Um, it certainly has characteristics of all of them. So. I think wherever you are, in whatever growing conditions you have, you kind of got to figure out the best way. So I'll talk you through what I did, and then what didn't happen, and then what I did, and then what did happen. But I think before I do that, now having owned this orchid for about two and a half years, it flowered once in 2020, and it's now 2022, I think I figured out what's going on with it for me. And the key, I think, is one of its parents. Now, exhibit A, it just so happens I have this rather fabulous Miltonia still in bloom. And this is Miltonia Guanabara, and I've made a video about this, which I will link below. Now, firstly, you can see the growth habit of this one, how it is sort of creeping out. It's sort of almost rhizomous. And you can also see the shape of the flower. And can you not see a sibling resemblance between the two flower shapes? Certainly. But I think perhaps more importantly, Nellie Isla has inherited quite a few of the conditional requirements of its Miltonia cousin. Not cousin, great, 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 great grandparents. The first year that I had this, I had it downstairs in a cooler, slightly shadier spot. Now, if you watched my grow space video, which I will link below as well, it is basically downstairs at the bottom of the stairs. So in winter, it gets quite um, bright indirect light and in summer, slightly less indirect, but nonetheless still quite bright light. It's always quite a few degrees cooler down there. Now, I am sure that Nellie Isla cannot take particularly cold nighttime winter minimums, which I get outside here in Melbourne. So although some orchids I do grow outside all year undercover, Nellie Isla certainly isn't one of them. So I decided early on she was going to be an indoor kind of gal only. But with all of that odontoglossum parentage, there is certainly a need for it to have a cool differentiation between the daytime maximum and the nighttime minimum without it being crazy. So I think what works for this orchid, firstly, is that you have quite a marked difference between day and night temperatures. And here in Melbourne, we do. Lucky draw number one. So there I was first year, it was downstairs and it bloomed for me and quite amazing too. Now what I will do is I'll drop in the picture of that flower and what you might notice is that the flower is much darker. Now on this 
year's flower, you can see that the lips are really quite speckled and the edge of the petals are much more sort of striated and speckly. Whereas on the previous bloom, they were much more of a sort of a velvet red and um, the other parts of the flower didn't have that speckling and the lip wasn't quite as pronounced. So what I have read and also witnessed is that the less light it gets, the darker the flowers are, the more light it gets, the lighter the flowers are. But if it is too dark, you're gonna get nothing. So it's that weird intercease between giving it enough light to get the kind of flowers that you want. Um, and for me, it was purely an accident that we had this different color, but the amount of light certainly will affect the flower. Now, I think the next issue for me was general ambient light. So where that orchid was, it did get quite good winter light, but it didn't get quite good summer light because the sun is higher and it penetrates less to that downstairs area. So what I decided to do in the second year that I owned it, when it didn't bloom for me, and I was bitterly disappointed thinking, ah, oh, I've got this Nelly Isla down pat. I hadn't, I moved it upstairs. And again, if you watch the video of my growing space, it is just out there on the landing. So basically all year, it's a north facing window, which is opaque. It gets a wash of indirect light. And at the top of the stairs, it's always warmer, but it still gets that nighttime temperature drop so that there's a difference between the daytime maximum and the nighttime minimum. Ta-da, witness this flower spike, and what you might also see here is a second flower spike. Although this one appears to only have at this point three buds, so not so huge, but this one is covered in flowers. So there you go, I think those were the two important things that made all the difference for me. So Albert Burridge may have created the Burrigiada group of orchids, but this particular one, Nelly Isla, was created in 1997 and was named after the breeder's wife. He was Mr. Isla and Nelly was his wife and she's immortalized forever. So it's kind of unfortunate that Nelly's got a bit of a reputation for being difficult. And so in reading other people's culture history of Nelly Isla, it is most commonly found to bloom in autumn, which is where we are right now in Australia. So that makes sense. But last time that it bloomed for me, which is the image that I'll drop in, that was spring. So it can also apparently bloom at any point when a new growth has matured. So in that regard, it's a bit like it's Odontoglossum ancestor, Oncidium ancestor, in that when the new pseudobulb matures, then you'll get a flower spike that emerges from that mature bulb, etc., etc. And with hybrid oncidiums, they can produce two cycles of growth a year, which means you can get two blooms a year. Seems that Nelly Isla can do the same. For me though, it has only been once, who knows? The other curious thing is the growth habit. Look, it is not an attractive plant. <laughs> Sorry, Nelly. But it's a bit of a mess in there. <laughs> it's certainly kind of growing all over the place as its Miltonia cousin seems to. And in terms of growth, um, the new growths really come at any point in the year. So I have got some new growths coming in here and new growth kind of coming out kind of everywhere. It's slightly confusing and somewhat mysterious, but look, there we are. So I think you can see that it is certainly sharing that let's make a run for it growth pattern of its Miltonia cousin. The other thing it shares with this is a need for misting. So I do miss this every morning. I have a mister by the orchid and in fact by all of them, I just miss them all in the morning with a cup of tea. I also feel that the other characteristic of its Miltonia ancestor that Nelly Isla likes is it likes a drink. <laughs> so I've noticed that Miltonia guanabara is a bit of a drinker, um, which doesn't mean it's an orchid that wants to be kept wet. It just drinks a lot. And so the medium does dry out quite quickly. So you just have to keep your eye on that. With Nelly Isla, the way that I've sort of managed that is just to give it a little often. So particularly in the warmer seasons, in the winter season, dial it down, but don't stop watering it because this is not an orchid that has a rest period. It can in fact grow at any time. So you kind of need to keep your eye on that. If it does have new growth, you're gonna to need to support them, but not keep it wet and soggy if you're in a colder climate like mine. So find that perfect balance. And potting medium wise, Nelly is in the same mix I use for many things, so particularly on Sidiums. So it is just medium bark with a little bit of perlite, with a little bit of charcoal, with a little bit of chopped sphagnum moss, but not too much, and a little bit of mycorrhizal fungi to promote healthy root growth and help the absorption of nutrients from the media into the roots, and a little bit of slow release fertilizer into the mix when I pot it. 
and then a bit of slow release fertilizer once a year and then liquid fertilizing about once every three waterings in the warm season diluted down to about one eighth of the recommended dose on the packet. And then the other thing plant lovers, <laughs> Nelly Isla I have read is kind of famed for its fragrance. Mine doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't not have a fragrance. It has a very vague spicy fragrance, completely unlike this one, Miltonia Guanabara, which has the most amazing fragrance, which smells like coriander or cilantro. Took me weeks to figure out what it was, but that's a beautiful fragrance. Nelly Isla doesn't, and that might just be the clone that I have. You might have one that's much more fragrant, or maybe it's your environment that makes it more so. So who knows, but mine, alas, isn't particularly fragrant, but she is looking beautiful. So you can get blooms at any time of the year once the pseudobulb has matured. And as you can see, I have a second spike coming, which makes me very happy. So there we are, plant lovers. Nelly Isla, I feel, once you kind of figure out what works for you um, in terms of the characteristics of its ancestors that kind of you need to plug into, it'll be different for everyone. But for me, it's very much sort of Miltonia care, which is the light, the humidity and the water. It's gone gangbusters and has bloomed for me. Unfortunate that Mrs. Isla has a reputation for being difficult, but once you figure out what works for it, just stick to it. And I am never moving this orchid. It is going to stay exactly where it is forever. There we are, plant lovers. I hope that that has been of use to your journey for growing Nelly Isla, because it is so rewarding when it blooms. It is a and this is why it's been hybridized, such an amazing flower. It is so bright and big and beautiful and extraordinary. So it's worth trying to figure out what might work for you. So from Nelly Isla and I, thank you very much for finding us. Thank you for watching. I do post every week. So do hit subscribe if you want to follow my continuing and very amateurish journeys along the road of growing orchids. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care wherever you are and I'll see you then.